Welcome to Storytime with Miss Solorzano. Today's story is Rainbow Weaver, Tejedora de Arcos Iris, by Linda Elovitz Marshall and Elisa Chavari. Rainbow Weaver, Tejedora del Arcos Iris, story by Linda Elovitz Marshall, illustrations by Elisa Chavari. High in the mountains of Lake Etalan, Ishal watched her mother weave thread into fabric as beautiful as a rainbow. The fabrics had blues as clear as the sky, reds as bright as the flowers, and yellows as golden as the corn. Mama, Ishal asked, may I weave too? Her mother shook her head. Not now, Ishal, she answered. This cloth is for the market. If it brings a good price, it will help pay for your school and books. In and out, in and out. Ashel's mothers and neighbors wove on backstrap wounds. They wove as their mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers had done before them, as Mayan women had done for more than 2,000 years. After a while, Ashel asked, Mama, may I weave now? Again, her mother shook her head. Count threads with me, my love. I'll show you how we make designs. Ishel and her mother counted together. Hmm. Kai ai, o kai, kai ai. With each additional color, the cloth grew longer and the design prettier. Ishel reached for some thread. Please, she asked. No, my love, answered her mother. You are still too young and there is no extra thread. Ishel crossed her arms and studied the hard packed dirt of the yard. I want to weave. I want to help pay for my books and school too, she thought. But she didn't say anything. Instead, she walked toward the milpa, the field where the villagers planted corn, beans, and squash. Plastic bags littered the path. Day after day, more bags were tossed from windows of passing vehicles or discarded by people returning from market. No one could use all the bags and there was nowhere to put them. Pushing the bags inside, a shell gathered the branches and sticks. Some of the sticks were long and some were short. She carried the sticks and the branches home, then tied them together. What are you doing? A neighbor asked. Making a loom, a shell answered. Her mother smiled. But a shell, she said, we don't have any extra thread. I know, Ma, she answered. I won't take any. A shell tied one end of her loom to a tree. Then she gathered tall blades of pahang grass. Sitting on the ground, a shell joined the blades of grass together by knotting the end of one blade to the end of another until she made a long chain. Then she pushed the batten over and under, back and forth, turning the blades of grass into fabric. When the fabric was finished, it was too small to be a doormat or even a placemat. It was too scratchy to wear as a bracelet. Worst of all, it was a dull greenish white. The fabric was far too small, far too scratchy, and far too dull for anyone to buy. Ishelle knew it would never sell. Disappointed, Ashel took another walk. Climbing the path villagers took to bring sheep up the mountain, she saw a clump of black wool hanging from a branch. Ashel tucked the wool under her belt. She noticed more clumps of black and white wool dotting the grasses, sticks, and plants. Ashel gathered this wool and tucked it under her belt too. At home, the shell turned and twisted the wool, spinning it into a long, thick strand of yarn. Then, over and under, back and forth, she pushed the batten and wove the yarn into fabric. The shell looked at what she had woven. The fabric was thick and heavy. The colors were boring. Tiny pieces of grass and dirt were stuck in the fabric. The weaving was far too thick, 
far too boring and far too dirty for anyone to buy. Tears roll down Ishelt's cheeks. There's no way my weaving will sell in the market, she thought, and no way I can help. Wiping her tears, Ishel headed toward the milpa again. Along the way, she kicked aside a plastic bag. Red, purple, orange, green, yellow, and blue bags everywhere. They were in the field, drooping from branches, and clogging roads and ditches. There were so many bags, it was hard for her to walk. Angry, Ishel picked up a bag. She ripped it to shreds. Suddenly, she had an idea. A shell gathered bag after colorful bag. She took the bags home, washed them, and hung them to dry. Now what are you doing? Another neighbor asked. A shell smiled. You'll see, she answered. By the next day, the bags were dry. A shell cut each bag into long, thin strips. She tied the strips together. Sitting at her loom, a shell pushed the batten over and under, back and forth weaving until she had used all the strips. The fabric was short, but it was clean and colorful. It had blues as clear as the sky, reds as bright as the flowers, and yellow as golden as the corn. The fabric looked like a beautiful rainbow, almost as pretty as the weavings of her mother, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers before her. Wondering what else she could make with the plastic bags, Ishel headed back to the milpa. She gathered more bags. The path looked cleaner and the countryside prettier. When Ishel returned home, her mother and neighbors were waiting with colorful plastic bags. We saw what you were doing, said a neighbor. We wanted to help. And without the bags everywhere, our village looks pretty again said another neighbor. Ishelle thanked them. Then she handed the weaving to her mother and said, my first rainbow. Her mother hugged her close. It's beautiful, my love, she said. Thank you, Mama, Ishelle said. But do you think it will sell? Let's take it to the market and see, said her mother. At the market the next day, a shell and her mother watched as people walked by the stalls. Finally, a woman stopped. She picked up a shell's weaving and asked, Did you make this? When a shell nodded, the woman smiled. Her weaving sold, and for a very good price. A shell beamed with happiness. Now she could help pay for her books and school. And like her mother, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers before her, a shell had woven a rainbow. Well, boys and girls, I really hope you enjoyed today's story of Rainbow Weaver, Tejedora de Arcos Iris. Until next time, bye!